Hi, and welcome to part seven of my Python programming for beginners. In the last video, we went over uh, loops. We went over the for loops and the while loops. And then before that, we went over ifs and then nested if statements. Today, we're going to be looking at chained conditional statements. Um, so these were basically the conditional statements that we were using in the if statements, in the elif statements, and in the while statements. Um, so these were the uh, conditional statements that we were checking to either see if something was true or false. Uh, so an example of that, like we saw, is if we had age equal to 17, and then we had age equal to 17. Oops. I'll give these brackets here. Um, so this was initially basically... Um, the conditional statement that we were testing here. So this is a conditional statement. So today we're going to be looking at chained conditional statements. So we're going to be looking at the possibility of having multiple conditions chained together. Now, um, I'm just going to pull up uh, one of our files here that we worked on previously, uh, because this actually kind of goes hand in hand with the nested if statements. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to open this up in Visual Studio Code, and I'm just going to copy paste this code here that we had from our nested if um, tutorial. So here we had age equals 16, and then we had two variables um, for is graduated and is licensed. And we had is graduated is set to true, is licensed is set to false. And then we had a lot of these multiple if statements um, nested inside of each other. So here we're actually going to be able to see like how we can um, make these a little bit simpler and maybe not have so much um, nested if statements. Um, so these are usually what conditionals, um, chain conditional statements can help with. Um, so I'm just going to erase this here, or we're going to be starting from scratch. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just take a look at all the different possibilities of these chain conditional statements. Um, so these operators that we're going to be using to chain them are it's going to be and, or, and then we're also going to be seeing the word not here. So the and and the and the ors are going to be uh, primarily used to combine statements. Um, and then the not is going to be used to um, cha um, negate them. Uh, so basically, if something we said was true, we could put the not in front of it and make it to false. Um, so let's take a look at a few examples here to see what the results would be. So let's just do our truth tables here. So let's do true and true. And we're just going to take a look at all the different possibilities of the ands all the different possibilities of the ors. This way you guys could see um, the outcome here. And I'm going to do them in every order here. So basically what we have here is going to be all the and statements. So we have true and true, true and false, false and true, which these are really the same. We're going to see that these are the same. And then we have false and false. So these are anding the, um, the values together. So the only one that you're going to see that come out, come out as true is going to be the true and true. So if something is true and something else is true, then the whole statement is true. But if something's true and then the other statement is false, then the entirety of that statement is false. Um, and then same thing, if both um, statements are false, the entire statement is false. Uh, so let's just run this here and let's see what it gives us. Um, so here we can see that we get true, false, false, and false, which is exactly what we were expecting. So let's change uh, these AND statements uh, to ORs and see the difference here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste these just so we have our AND statements still and we have the OR statements, uh, just so this way we can really see um, what's going on. All right, so let's run these here. Um, so we know that the first four are our AND statements, and then our last four is our OR statements. Um, so we have our statements right here. 
And let's see what these equal out to be here. Just all right. So we have true or true, which is going to be true. True or false, which is going to be equal to true. False or true is going to be true. And then false or false is still going to be false. Uh, so the logic behind that is if you have a true statement or another true statement, uh, both of those are true. So the entirety statement is going to be true. If you say um, uh, there's a true statement, but there's also a false statement, but you just or them together, the whole statement is true. Like if I say the sky is blue and I'm a billionaire, well, the I'm a billionaire is definitely false, uh, but the sky is blue. So the statement's still true uh, because one of them was true. Um, and then the same thing for the inverted uh, false or true. And then if the both statements are false, uh, then everything is going to be false at that point. If I say the sky is falling and the earth is colliding into the sun, which might be true, um, but we're just going to take those as both false statements. I'm not too positive on astronomy there, if there could ever have that happen. Um, but for now, uh, both of those statements are false. Uh, so that whole condition that whole chained statement is also false now we have the not values um, so let's actually erase all of, actually we're just going to keep these here so what we're going to do here is we're going to print out not true and then we are going to print out not false and what we're going to do just to clearly see where this is here I'm just going to print out a bunch of, of lines here so we can see where our not true and our not false is. All right, so not true is equal to false and not false is equal to true. So that's exactly kind of what I was explaining earlier was if you have the not in front of something, it will just negate that value. Uh, think of it as like putting a, a negative sign in front of a number. If you put a negative sign in front of a negative number, it becomes positive. If you put a negative in front of a positive number, it becomes negative. So very, very much kind of like that, um, or multiplying. Uh, basically, you would be multiplying those values. Uh, so you get the opposite of the original value. So let's take a look at actual uh, examples here and not just using uh, the Boolean um, variables. Um, so let's actually see here if we have our age, which is equal to 16. And then let's have uh, in school is set to true. And let's just use these two. I think that that should give us a pretty good example here. So let's say we have a, um, let's do a while statement here. These are kind of fun to do. Um, so we have a while statement here, and we're just going to say while age equals to 16 and in school, we print in school still and 16. All right. Oops, and we just need to do that there. All right, so while the age is 16 and school is equal to true, then we have in, in school still and 16. And then we're going to have a, um, let's do this as choice here. And then we're going to have an input. going to be. Are you still in school now? All right, and then we're going to have that choice. We're going to have a if statement in here. So we're just combining all the skills that we've learned in our previous videos here. So if our choice dot lower, because we're just going to convert everything to lower. We've seen this in. Um, in the previous videos where we were getting the value and then it was only taking in either a capital or a lowercase. Uh, but since Python is case sensitive, we always wanna make sure that we're 
adjusting that case to the case that we want to test against. So if choice dot lower equals to b n, and then we're going to put in school is equal to false, and then else, uh, we're just not going to do anything. So we're just going to do a pass. Now what pass means is it's just going to basically kind of like look at it, not do anything, and just kind of exit out of the loop. We could have simply just have done this as well, and this would also work. So this is where I'm going to leave it at there. Um, so basically, if you type in N, then this should exit the loop. So let's see what happens here. So in school, still N16, are you still in school? We're just going to put, um, oops, we're just going to put the letter P here, still in school. And let's say that we're no longer in school, and then it exits out because this in school was set to false. So now if I do uh, the or here, now this is actually where these loops get kind of dangerous because now there is no, um, the statement could well be not very true. So let's actually just uh, exit out here and let's just put, um, might still be in school and 16. And then are you still in school now? Perfect. All right, so we might still be in school. Um, and we are 16. Are we still in school now? Let's just do P. It's still there. Now let's tell it that we're no longer in school. And it's still looping because we have the or statement here. Um, so this age would have to change. It would not have to be 16. Uh, so what we could do in this case is um, have another choice here. And let's put another equal to input here. Um, and let's just do how old are you? And then let's do a if choice equals actually all we need to do is do an age here and let's make sure that we are converting this to an integer here all right perfect so this should work uh, so kind of like what we've seen in our previous videos here um, so we are taking in an age, an input, but we are actually converting that input directly to an integer on that line. Um, so we can assign age to a number. So let's see what happens here. So are you still in school? We're just going to say we're still in school. Um, are you still in school? Uh, we are. Uh, give me one second here. seems to not be reaching this loop here. So let me just doesn't seem to be taking in any of these changes here. So let me just uh, save this here and see if it's working now. OK, there you go. Perfect. So um, if we say that we're still in school, um, it's asking how old are we? So let's just tell it that we are 16. It's still in the loop. Let's tell it that we are no longer in school. We're still in the loop. And let's tell it that. We are still 16. We're still in the loop here. Um, so are we still in school? Now that school is already false, um, this question really shouldn't be asked anymore. But I'm just going to say no. And I'm going to say that I'm 17. And it exits out of the loop. 
So a way to even make this um, even better here is we can add a if in school right here. And then we are going to see how the nesting and everything works. Um, so the age, we're always going to ask for the age because the age doesn't matter if you're in school or not. Uh, so here, here we'll have the chained conditional statement here of age is equal to 16 or in school. Uh, so let's just save this here because that was my problem last time. I forgot to save and then I went to execute the code and it was still executing um, before I had made that change here. So uh, let's run this here. So are we still in school? We're just going to say yes. How old are we? We're going to still say that we're 16. Are you still in school? Nope. I'm still 16 though. And now it's just asking how old am I? Now I finally turned 17 and it is out. As you saw in the last part, it did not ask me if I was still in school because it had noticed that the school was set to false. So this is how you would use these chained conditional statements. You can chain as many as you want. Um, it's going to be really up to the application that you're building or game that you're building to determine if a change conditional statement would be best um, or if nested um, if statements would be best. It really kind of depends on the application um, and what you're building and what your needs are. Um, but this is how you would do change conditional statements. Play around with these. I know that this video went a little bit long just for this, um, but I wanted to just kind of incorporate the loops, the if statements, a nested if statements, and change conditional statements. Um, on the next video, I will be looking at lists and tuples. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be uh, notified when that video drops. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next video.